what was the biggest struggle? I'm going to get to the part where you're selling your soiled underwear to men. Um, <laughs> the best part. <laughs> it's the best part. Not, I don't want to give it away too quick here. I got laid off. I got, fi- I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man is suck. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm here in the break room with our co-host, Josh Ricardo. What's Edward, up, Edward, will you be my Valentine? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd ask. We actually have, for the first time on the show, a uh, non-comedian. But not only is she a non-comedian, she is also our first sex worker. Uh, she comes out with this amazing book that I have in my hands now, Granny Panties, How I Made a Fortune Selling My Worn Undies. She's a former social worker, now turned sexual content creator. Please help me welcome Ruby Lynn. Thank you. Yeah, I, was, I didn't coming. know I was your first. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's what exciting. What is your this worst is day job? Ruby, it is exciting, <laughs> but I have to get to the first question already. Oh, boy. I've had a few. But I, one that comes to mind that I worked at for about a month before I got fired was, gosh, back in 2007, I think. Uh-huh. I went to work for an aerospace company. Um, they built Kevlar for uh, like oh, yeah. SWAT helicopters yeah. and all this thing. And they hire me. And I am a smart girl, but they, they just wanted me to uh, negotiate the shipping of this Kevlar to like the US government. I mean, it was a huge thing yeah. and I had no idea about manufacturing or processes or any of that. And so, you know, I screwed it up royally. Oh, oh nice. Well, how did you screw it up? Well, I guess I didn't book the right shipping company. It didn't get there right on time. You know, all that manufacturing. Oh, so you're like administration facilitating yes. the product being put in the right hands. Yes. And you weren't wearing the Kevlar. No. And I messed it up <laughs> and promptly got fired. I like to think that like a bunch of like SWAT guys are waiting for Kevlar and just like yeah. sweaters show up. <laughs> what the? <laughs> oh, let, me, uh, well, let me ask you this now. I find this the fascinating part about today's day and age that OnlyFans has made it where being really sexy gets you different things. Like being a sexy woman has always gotten you something. But like my mother <laughs> didn't have OnlyFans. My mother used to like just work guys over for a cheap dinner. You know, like. <laughs> Now you can parlay it into other things. And I feel like because your your trajectory is granny panty. I'm the sexiest granny panty lady. Or Like I looked at all your stuff and I'm like, oh, she's a hot older woman. Mm-hmm. And that's what the lean in is. But you were once a hot young woman in an era where there wasn't a whole lot of shit you could do with your hotness besides work your little community. You couldn't like reach out to people on OnlyFans and have like these boyfriend experiences and make money. Yeah. Now you're making money in that way uh, in this different time period of your life. Isn't that, do you like think to yourself what you could have done? I do. Not be selling Kevlar in a box to people and shipping it to someone, the <laughs> wrong <getting> house. <laughs> Some guy's house in Flint. <laughs> right, who receives a helicopter. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, except I, when I was younger, I wasn't hot. I didn't think I was hot um, I at all. I didn't believe I was hotter until I got older. Really? Yes. Yeah. Ed, I, do you feel that way about yourself? That now you're hot? No. I think I was hotter <laughs> when I was younger, for sure. The boy you said, McGowan? <laughs> yeah. That you was you had OnlyFans? Oh, then? yeah. I look at those pictures. I'm like, oh, I was so thin. <laughs> It's the complete opposite for me. Really? Yes. So um, to be perfectly honest, I was morbidly obese for most of my life until I hit about 38. Oh, wow. No yes. way. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Holy shit. How did you? Hypersexual, but I was I was a big girl. Uh-huh. What, what was the turning point for like the weight loss? Uh, divorce. Ah, <laughs> nice. Isn't that funny how someone breaking your heart or leaving you makes you get... Like, why, like sometimes I would... Uh, think to myself if girls got hotter after being with me like well you know why not do that when you're with me why did it take us breaking up for you to go to the gym or to you know why what is that is it because you want to show somebody up well for me i was in a 15 year long abusive marriage both physically and mentally no i'm not i don't mean to be a downer but that was you know the catalyst for eating my feelings Mm -hmm. right and so getting rid of that baggage yeah Mm -hmm. you know i got rid of a lot of baggage what was your highest weight Oh gosh, my highest weight I think was like two fifty. And what was your favorite food? 
then oh anything <laughs> obviously <laughs> anything well i have i, I was setting ed up i was ed uh, has some, some well i was just stuff. like I, i'm like i'm right there with you 250 i'm coming up on it <laughs> <laughs> and i should Ed'll eat expired tuna fish we yeah. mentioned on the show quite a bit and uh, i do want to <laughs> say that there's nothing wrong with being 250 pounds but for me i wasn't um happy in my own skin mm-hmm. but there are many many beautiful women out there who are 250 so i want to make sure that i say that totally you're diplomatic we appreciate sure. that i myself am not uh <laughs> i'm not uh, i come from a lot of fat people and i say fat because i myself am a, an addict dopamine i eat to mask feelings i eat right. for all that totally. stuff. so i've had to curb and fight the same things that a lot of obese people fight and i understand everyone's battles different and blah 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 mm-hmm. blah blah but i think as a society ed we, I'm cool with saying it's cool to be fat as long as I can still say that you're fat. I don't want anyone to go like, uh, that is so sexy. Maybe to some people it is. Like, I like right. thicker women. Right. Oh, I'm not hating yeah. on anyone who's thick, but let's be real. You can Sometimes, be fat and sexy for Yeah, oh sure. my God. Sexiness, I think, is a, yeah. a mindset, is a Absolutely. body language, is a yeah. confidence. Right. But exactly. don't fucking tell me that I should be cool with you not being healthy. Like, I got a two-year-old son. If this kid gets fat, it's something I've done wrong. I have done something wrong as a parent, which means he cannot say, I need to stop, push myself away from the table. Dude, I ate six cannolis last night. (laughs) Six. I I saw him. Yeah, he was here. Six cannolis last night. And I woke up this morning and I was just like, I'm like a a sugar hangover right now. I'm just like, I'm not, it's not healthy. (laughs) I'm not doing myself any favors. So you didn't have a favorite food? No, I mean, anything pasta, of course, is comfort food. Where are you? Where were you based? I'm. I'm now. I'm so invested now in like Portland, e- Oregon. Uh, I'm out of Portland. Oh, my brother Oregon. lives in Portland. I heard so, that. Earlier. Good donuts, right? Yeah, Voodoo but donuts? I didn't even Whoa. have any of that back then. So you were just. You gotta realize that's like twenty years ago almost oh. mm-hmm. was portland like uh what was portland like twenty years ago? Was it what it is now? Like uh, uh it's like very uh was it as very, progressive? Like, keep it weird. Yeah, it's, yeah, it was keep, keep it weird. weird. Keep it weird. Yeah, right. 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 Are you still out there? I am. Yes, I am. Um nowadays Portland isn't so great because it's really went to hell. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um there's oh, yeah. just uh, a lot of a huge homeless issue yes. yeah, yeah, which yeah. is because the city doesn't have money to build housing to offer services. There's just really? no funds out there. I had no idea. Yeah, no, and no. then the riots, you know, the COVID riots yeah, took right. out a lot of businesses left. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's not the great Portland that it used to be. Yeah, it used to be a really great city. And my brother yeah. moved there because it was like cheap to live and you right. could raise a now family. Now it's very expensive. And now his property value is way down because they allow homeless camps to set up. And they right. a lot of these camps have like hepatitis B and C in them or crazy shit. I don't know they're about all, that. They're all living in a like a... You know, it's not sanitary. Right. Crazy. I like the medical when it got there. You know, because uh, it's just not sanitary. <laughs> well, because well, you know, Ruby was like, I don't know about that. And I was trying to figure out if I where I read it. So at least don't sound like a complete moron. <laughs> I like I like you. You're just... It's just not sanitary. I don't. I, mean, I don't know about I all that. I am a clean freak, and if there's 50 people taking a shit in the same area without proper plumbing, let's just go out and say there's probably some bacteria problems right, right. hanging out around there. Well, I, I went into my medical background mode for a moment. Well, I'm gonna get to your social hey, work and all that. So What's the medical? medical? Back, you have medical background? I do. Yeah. So did you go to school for like a? I did. I uh, went to college at 41 years old and got dual bachelor's degrees as a single mom raising oh, three kids. That divorce was the greatest thing. It ever was happened. the greatest wow. thing that ever happened to me. You got um, hot and. Sp- and extra and smart. smart. Exactly. Hot and smart. That's great. So yeah, yeah, I did. I got a degree in public health with an emphasis on uh, community education and communicable disease. And I also got another second bachelor's degree in pre-med. So Whoa. I was, I just double dipped the classes yeah. basically, but wow. yeah. How long did it take you to lose all the weight? Gosh, I lost the weight actually right before I got divorced um, because I knew what my plan was right. coming down Women the road. I made a plan. Right. Women are good like that. It took man. me about a year, maybe a little over a year. Okay. Yeah. Damn. That's pretty good. Now, wow. what was the biggest struggle? I'm going to get to the part where you're selling your soiled underwear to men. Um, <laughs> the best part. <laughs> it's the best part. I don't want to give it away too quick here. But when you are like, okay, uh, I'm losing the weight. And then there's that part where you're like, now I got to tighten. Is that part coming while you're in school or is it as you're thinking, I'm going to sell, I'm going to get into a business that's 
more based on the way my aesthetic is. Because losing 250, like dropping from 250 to 150, yeah. the skin alone. Oh, right. Now, I don't have a medical background like you, but I have watched a lot of 600 Pound Life and uh, right. I love those shows. So, <laughs> I can tell a doctor you. knows out in, I, I'm very familiar with his work. I, I know <laughs> yeah. what he does. So, what was it for you where you're like, all right, I have to keep going with this and, and tighten? Was it about showing yourself or was it just about you? Well, I had I had my loose skin removed. I've never been oh, secret about that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because wow. I've never made that a secret. That I heard that is very painful. Yeah. Ooh. It oh, was. Wow. It was. What's the most painful part? The arm or the, um, the, the area? Out of all the skin removal, I would say the arms were probably the most painful. Yeah. Huh. They Damn. warned me about it. They made a show about that, too. I watched that With show. I got a lot removal? of time on my hands. So, well, yeah, it's so like a... Is it all stitches? Are you get all stitched up? Is that... Is it like right. a, yeah, right. wow. Yeah, because right. having stitches is... Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, those wound sites are uh, painful. Is that like another thing you got to wow. overcome, too, emotionally? The, the scars? Yeah, it is. And you have to be okay with that. Yeah. And for a long time, I wasn't. But it's been so long now that they're faded. I mean, oh, right. for the most part. Yeah, yeah, but right. I, I think it's a badge of honor. I've yeah. been through a lot. And so, yeah. you know what? And also, I want to empower women, especially. That if you don't like your life, remake it. Mm -hmm. In this day and age, there's no reason why you cannot remake your story. You know, and it may not be skin removal. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, building social media and doing OnlyFans. Yeah. The reason I wrote the book was because I also wanted to empower women to um, have options and that you're never too old. Don't be like, oh, I wish I would have done that when I was younger. <laughs> Freaking do it now. Yeah. It doesn't matter how old you are. Ed, you know, I I believe what she's saying. And sometimes when I hear uh, other like sex workers or any kind of Instagram model say empower, I empower women, I sometimes go like, that's like the buzz cliche. trend. Right. You're supposed, to, you're yeah, supposed yeah, to say yeah, that because you're so hot and now yeah. you're trying to make it like, I don't even know that I'm hot. I just want people to know that I'm empowering you by my tits <laughs> right, falling out right. of this shirt. Right. But with you, I'm like, man, the fight is real. Yeah. And yeah. I believed everything you Absolutely. said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It means so much more when you've gone through something yes. and you've done it as opposed to like a smoking hot 22 yeah. year old with genetically gifted, gifted hit the lottery. Who's some just like surgery. came in at the right time. Yeah. yeah. But, right. But here's another thing I want to tell you. Um, when I got my divorce, I was probably people thought I was the most unlikely person because I kept all of my abuse secret even from family they had no idea so when i got divorced and kicked him to the curb finally got the guts to do it i can't tell you the women in my small small community it was a suburb um outside of portland mm -hmm. came to me and said oh my god how did you do that like you've been a stay-at-home mom you've done i mean like where did you find the strength to do that and so even back then uh through all that made it kind of worth it yeah to give these other women hope that yeah, sometimes you just got to power through and yeah, make yeah. a decision and totally. figure it out. Well, you, your example is it's you. It's hard to know that because I, I do. I, you know, I used to be like a crazy derelict drug addict crackhead. for years. Oh. Yeah, crackhead, the whole oh. thing. And, um, you know, we're both stand up comedians. So, like, you know, sometimes I'm talking about that on stage mm -hmm. and then, you know, and I'm telling jokes. But afterwards, you know, every once in a while, somebody mm -hmm. will come up to me and be like, hey, man, thanks a lot. You know, I'm, I'm like 20 days sober right now. I'm like, oh, dude, amazing, nice. Yeah. Yeah, so cool. our own Ed empowers crackheads. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. empowering ex, crackheads. Ex crackheads. <laughs> well, you know, Ed current. So, you know, I don't, ju I don't judge. Right. You empower all people, I don't Ed. judge. <laughs> you're a crackhead. You're okay with me. All right? <laughs> so you're a social worker by trade at this time. Yes. How are you eating your feelings, having all this, like, chaos inside of you and then being required for other people's care How, i mean that must have been hard well, i uh didn't start doing social work until let's see i graduated college in 2012 i got into the social work part of it in uh, about january of 2016 okay so i had different positions yeah. in my field up oh until so that then. came after oh yeah right, because so that was, was well after so gotcha, you were gotcha. okay with oh, yourself yeah. Finally, and then you were able to help others because right. social work's a heavy, heavy burden. I had a friend who would uh, pick kids up from like terrible houses they were mm -hmm. living in and see them have to go back because of the 
the red tape and all the right. crazy uh, laws right. with children and yeah. the stories I've heard, especially as an abused kid, is are just on another level of mm -hmm. awfulness. And that's a you want to talk about like detectives who have to go solve murders. This is a whole other level of mental trauma you're putting right. yourself to. Right. And you don't want to get numb to that. I no. assume you want to be able to still feel so you could be effective, but also there's probably some balance to that, I would assume. Yes, and I specifically chose not to work with kids. Um, oh, smart. I ch the population I worked with was the homeless, um, people with substance abuse. So the poorest and sickest of the community is who I worked with. Mm -hmm. And I loved my job, but you're right. Towards the end, I was becoming a bit jaded just because... Right. With you know the funds aren't there to help, and when you have Medicaid insurance, your options are very limited. And so, day in and day out, trying to you know find solutions for these really sick folks who couldn't just go to the specialist or the psychiatrist you know yeah. that's in their neighborhood because they don't take that insurance. And so, it was very challenging, and I was definitely starting to get burned out. How many people are you meeting towards the end there where you're like? I feel uh, maybe because I'm just a like a hard nosed asshole about certain things because of my upbringing. But I feel like after the first year, I would start out like, man, I'm going to help these people. I can't wait to help, man. I cannot wait. Let's see what we can do. I got your back. And then after a while, you're seeing the people that are juicing the system. Yes. That right. don't want to help you themselves. Bingo. And that would yeah. aggravate yeah, the yeah, shit yeah, out of me. And over. that's part of why I yeah. got out of it eventually. Because yeah. I'm really, I'm an addict. I'm related to a lot of severe addicts mm -hmm. and I know their brain yeah. and I know that because we're from the same bloodline, we are capable mm -hmm. of not being perfect, but we are capable of leading right. some kind of life of value. Right. And I would, I remember when I started to get better, I try to extend that to my people close to me. Mm -hmm. right. Nothing to do with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to yeah, stay yeah. here. Right. And I'm going to make every excuse I can to to get you to, I'm going to manipulate you, mm -hmm. shine you on. I'm going to get you to believe my story. Right. And I'm going to sleep on your couch for six months. Like that's their. Right. And that would drive me nuts. It did. It did drive me nuts. And, and it would drive me to sell my underwear, Ruby. <laughs> When, when After I get, a full four-day workout, I'm going to wear the same underwear and sell them. When I retired from that completely in April of 2022 to do um, adult content full-time, I did both for two and a half years. I did say um, th there's someone better to do this job than me. Yeah, because you have because to come to that I, realization yourself. Yeah, yeah, because I was not doing you know, my company or my uh, caseload any favors mm -hmm. because... I was just. I was, yeah, once you get burned out. Yeah. Like you just, I think, I, I would imagine everybody's kind of got like a, a lid on how many hours you could just put in. Right. And how many people you could just see, like, just just gaming you, just yeah. just getting over on you. And yes. it's just like, I don't know. And you, know. you start mailing it in. Yeah. Well, this is the first chapter from Grandma to Gilf. How the heck I started selling my panties. This was me, a 53 year old mother of five. Whoa. And a grandmother to seven. Not as old as some grandmas, but old enough to have a big brood. I was in the best shape of my life, and I had slimmed down considerably. I was in a fabulous relationship with a good and kind man. I had a great career as a social worker specializing in medical case management in Portland, Oregon. I was in charge of 50 patients who had severe problems. Now, <laughs> isn't he a, look at him. What a dad right there. You can tell. You can tell I'm, I can tell you're doing story time. <laughs> story time must be so I have dyslexia, epic. too, so I nailed that. Reading you, aloud you is not my well. thing. You killed it. I you talked to, me like I was like a slow adult. <laughs> you did so well. <laughs> look at you. Your soul shaker came out. <laughs> wow, you're not as stupid as you look with that nose. <laughs> Your stupid Italian guinea nose. Um... Story time with Josh Ricardo. <laughs> Story time with Josh Ricardo. <laughs> I just insult my own heritage. Uh, so you're doing it for two and a half years before mm -hmm. you make the big jump. It, I compare this to the comedy move, right? Before you quit that <laughs> shitty day job. Oh, yeah. And yeah. you go, I'm going full time, baby. Yeah, I'm going to go yeah. on the road and make 20000 a year. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say you're with a sweet and kind man. So I did some research on you. Yes. Because uh, you're a lovely publicist. Uh, my good friend, Lainey. Is right here, Lenny Spies. All of you know Lenny. Uh, she always is so good about sending the link. So I deep dive, and the I haven't. So Lenny was a just a couple context information for the people at home. Lenny used to bring in a lot of her clients for my old podcast with the alternative oh, okay. lifestyle one. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Where we talked about uh, me being ethically non-monogamous and all these poly and all these weird kinks I'm into, and she would bring people in and talk about how they got into that. And it used to be so hard not to masturbate to all these. Uh -huh. She sends like uh -huh. photos and oh, links. Sure, yeah, yeah. 
But because we do a different show now, I'm yeah. in a different mindset when those emails come through. You said you were with, in this book, in that first chapter, a kind man, mm -hmm. a sweethearted man, obviously not the, the husband, Correct. someone new. And now you're starting to do adult content. And when I looked you up, it seems like you're doing now adult content with others. Oh, right? yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do you discuss that with your partner? Uh, it, it was it. And how are you telling him you're you're were you doing this before you guys got together? Like, how does that work? And like, what is, how does that happen? Yeah. So when we met in at the end of 2008, one of the things having come out of the past that I did, I did not want to be completely monogamous. I wanted that out if mm -hmm. I needed it. So yeah. if I was if I made a bad choice again, <laughs> mm -hmm. was my thought. Mm -hmm. I want to have that out. Mm -hmm. And also, when I got divorced, it was spring break. I mean, holy yes. man! I mean, I if mean, you're divorced sure. and now you love your body, yes, and you're already hypersexual. I'm just not even it. gonna go there. That yeah. was spring break for about you know three years. Mm -hmm. But uh, so that was one of my requirements. And so right from the beginning of our relationship, we were involved in the swing lifestyle. Okay. Oh. So that. How, Did you meet that way, like on an app? Nope. You just happened to meet, and then just he met was through, like through our kids. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> so, mom, I got the swinger guy I met. I think he'd be perfect for you. <laughs> right. Right. This guy has so many rings and lotions and swings. He had and... <laughs> never done it. He had never done it. So you turned him on. To him. <clears throat> yeah. What? I mean, it was a requirement. Basically, it's like you check all my boxes, but one. Uh huh. And I said one night we're laying there. I said, "How do you feel about a threesome?" And he said, oh, it's always been my dream to have two women. I said, two women? Uh, how about another guy and you and me? And he's like, great? women over 30 goes, right away go to the other guy. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, he goes, I'll try smart. it. I'll try it. So. Awesome. That's how it started. Yeah, that's great. So, so how long ago was that? That was a, like the, I would say the beginning of 2009. We met late 2008. So oh, okay. 2009. And he's, you guys are still together? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. So did you start swinging? Before you lost all He's the way, he's my videographer. He oh, shoots yeah, he, all my scenes. Oh, awesome! Oh, cool. Yeah. See, you got to keep it in the family. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep. Some, he knows my good angles. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, he knows about the close-ups. <laughs> yeah, you're a camera buff. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> <laughs> it was just that B and H with the Jewish guys. Tell him, you know, hey. <laughs> Yeah, a couple videographer buddies. Uh. Hey, I need this. How's this going to do when I shoot my shoot my wife? My video of my wife. My wife's banging two or three guys. How? Uh, what's the angle? What's, what's the, angle the coverage? Be the peripheral. Do I need a full frame sensor? Can I get away with the, the smaller sensor here? So you were already doing that kind of lifestyle before you met him, and that, and you were the more experienced one. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because I always try to figure. Like I've. I really we don't talk about this on my show, so I'm now I'm like kind of giddy because it's like a process I've had to go through where you're like, <laughs> all right, now I figured out who I am sexually, mm -hmm. but now I am trying to figure out who my partner is, right? And now I know some things, but maybe this person does not, and right. now you have to figure out what those things are. So you had already been doing stuff in your private life that were like that was like that, Correct. and then you met this person, and they were like, I'm cool with that, right. and then after that comes the content being sold. Well, so uh, that was like 2009 and it was 2020, right before COVID, that I had this idea to start selling my panties online. Who gave you the idea? What did so you see? So I was in a Facebook group called Scarlet's Chambers. It's still there today. I'm still in there. Um, that there were some women talking about, you know, making extra money. And as a social worker, you don't get paid that much. I mean, it's like one of those, yeah. you know, jobs. It just doesn't make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my husband was a mechanic. And you really do also. have five kids. Yes, it and, blended. Uh, oh, I had three, oh, okay. he had two, okay. so five. But oh, we okay. raised five teenagers And now together. they're all out of the house. They are, yep. And we have 10 grandbabies, so <laughs> that's good. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> but I wanted to make extra money to travel. Like, I've always had a travel bug. I love travel. But I wanted to do my dream trip, which was go to the UK. That's where, you know, my family heritage is from England. And mm -hmm. I've wanted to go since high school. It's expensive. Oh, yeah. So I read this article or this these women posting about making all this money. They posted the website. I literally ran to that website, made an account, went to my panty drawer, picked out the nicest pair I had in there, took some really crappy cell phone pictures and listed it. Wow. And that was fall. That was actually fall of 2019. The first time I did it for about six weeks, I didn't make that much money. I think I sold three pairs. And okay. how much was it? Were you selling a pair? Would you get, back you then? Get? It was 25 bucks. 25 bucks for a uh, pair of, and they were nice panties. 
Yeah. They were good panties. Yeah. How much do the panties themselves cost? I'm trying to well, figure out your P&L right here. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you're clearing I, like 12 bucks? <laughs> probably. Actually, you're not far off. Okay. So the first time I tried it, I failed miserably because I didn't look at it as a business. I looked at it as something fun yeah. and maybe mm. make some extra money. So I deleted my account, said, forget it. I, You know, I'm not going to do it. We go on vacation in January of 2020 to Hawaii, and mm. I'm still like, I'm very entrepreneurial. I've done probably every MLM known to mankind, you know, in the past. What's that? And MLM, sorry, uh, I'm dumb. Uh, Multi level marketing. Ah. So, oh, okay. oh, you right, know, yeah, Isogenics, yeah. Pampered Chef, you name it. Yeah. yeah that kind of thing. So Avon. Very, I didn't do that one. Oh. Mary Kay, all Mary that Kay, stuff. Yeah, 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 so yeah right. I'm okay. very entrepreneurial, and uh-huh. I never wanted to work for someone else, but it's just. You yeah. know, you're, you're like taught that, I think, especially at my age. You were, that's I'm, I'm, still I, so I'm new. an office guy and I like it because uh, I don't have to think of like comedy's already too um, marketing heavy for me these days, mm-hmm. period. And I, I do like like you're saying, I don't want a boss, but it is easy to go yeah. if you can find something that you can deal with. And right. It's, not necessarily enjoyable, but like I can live with this and the money's really great. Yeah. And now I don't have to think about anything. I don't think about the payroll. I don't think about like anything else right. Uh, right. but I, I see what you're saying yeah. I definitely I do, yeah. agree with you I do more like the freelance gigs yeah you're a freelance guy so I do like so it's oh, it's kind of like best of both worlds where you're like hey I don't even really work here you know what I mean I'm right. at a place yeah, yeah, I'm at yeah. a place for a couple weeks I'm like yeah I'm, yeah, but I don't really work here I don't really care <laughs> I check in I check out you know yeah. that's, that's yeah. a little bit of a but it is like a feast or famine kind of thing where like when you're doing a, like your own business you kind of mm-hmm. it's you're, you're doing like a growing right, kind of situation right. yeah yeah, so we went on vacation, and I I still couldn't let this go. And I'm like, you know, we started talking, and I said, I need you to be like the my equal business partner. So I think if we take better pictures and I write better copy, and I think we could really make something. Of this. He's, Did okay. you watch anyone doing it that you were like, oh, this person's <clears throat> kind of in line with what I, how I look, maybe an age range, the stuff mm-hmm. they're doing. With, there was no inspiration not at really all. I mean I saw the other girls on there but I was clearly the oldest on there but you would have been in the community the sex community as a, a private citizen so you knew about the turn-ons that you had yeah so you kind right. of that's how you kind of figured out your niche in a way kind right, of okay. yeah and I just what I realized is that there weren't a lot of women entering this arena at my age in their 50s so now you have the market cornered in a that's way. what i went uh, bingo so we come back uh he learns to use the digital camera that i paid way too much money for you know in uh, too, a year just... and, <laughs> and the minute i rebranded I, I talk about this in the book i thought of a different stage name <clears throat> and you know went into it as a business thought and it just exploded it took off i i couldn't i was buying i was having to go to buy panties and more and more i was booked out six weeks ahead holy shit oh wow and what do you think changed just, the I quality mean, really? oh okay. the quality of the pictures that's you know marketing and what kind of pictures were you what kind of pictures do you put up because i haven't looked at the site yet well and i don't even do that anymore i sell all my panties now through only fans yeah yeah but when you were yeah. doing it though like what were like what are the you standard have, like, poses st- you oh got, yeah you got, like a stock on pile, all like... fours you oh, know oh, okay. seeing the panties all right. up your rear yeah, um, yeah, from yeah. the front because they're yeah. granny panties well they're they're, not... i sold all kinds thongs oh. g-strings full back what granny sells panties. the most I thong would say G-string, what sells pants. is cotton thongs because cotton it absorbs thong. the scent. Ah, so how long do you got to walk around? Like if I want to sell my underwear, how often do I have to shove them up my crack? Do I run around the neighborhood? Like what needs to be done to get the <clears> scent <throat> in there? And does it even matter? Um, It does matter, actually. Okay. And, you know, what I found, it was all trial and error. I went into this completely blind. Everything I learned was from reading watching what others were doing i had no mentor Mm -hmm. i i navigated this all on my own and so what i found as an older woman who's not 23 i say 23 and creamy all the time uh, (laughs) you know that where everyone else is uh wearing them for one day i gotta wear them from two you know so now the buyer thinks they're getting a bonus i wear my panties two days yeah not oh, one, smart. and you know, da 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 da. How's the pH balance with that? <laughs> I'm just curious. Like, do you worry? Like, okay, I'm wearing the same panties two days in a row. Could that mess up my pH balance? How? Because these are all yeah. occupational hazards, right? Like, right. even as a comedian, 
What do you mean you don't know? You're, pe- You're a man. My, my pH balance? Well, no, I'm in general. You, you... <laughs> I'm like, how do you know your pH balance? Well, I thought feeling. you were about to go it's into a as a comedian feeling. when I'm on stage when my pH balance is not correct. <laughs> I just uh, don't feel very literal. as funny. <laughs> Seriously, if you have a little itch down there, you're not, you don't feel as So yeah. a pH balance would create a, like an Like a yeast itch? infection. Oh. You yeah. could, a lot could happen. It's a very complicated area. I don't claim to know it all, but I've done a... Here's what know, I know about a pH balance. Here's what I know about a pH balance. I had to change the pool chlorine <laughs> when I was a kid. I had to check it. That's all I know. pH balance. Well, let me let me tell you. School I me. learned very quickly not to uh, put lollipops up yourself because it will create a pH balance. How many had to go up there before you? T- <laughs> and you'll end up at the doctor. So. <laughs> <laughs> what to get it removed? Did it get stuck? No, to, get, get stuck? to get medication for the yeast infection. <laughs> it does it take to get to the center of that Tootsie Pop head? <laughs> that was a custom video. Someone said, "I want this lollipop up your hoo ha." So that's one that you can't do. Cross so yeah, I learned real quick that we don't put candy up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the candy out. I had a girl once. Uh, what about the, a cannoli? <laughs> A lot of Fortunato's uh, cannoli, number seven. <laughs> I once had a girl that did the syrup and the whipped cream on my uh, penis. Uh huh. I'm not a food sex guy. Yeah, yeah, no. It doesn't work for me. No. Yeah. I know a lot of people are into that stuff, no. but I don't need all that. Well, no. then the whipped cream sours from the heat of your skin. There you go. Yeah. See? Ruby Lynn knows. I know these know. things. I get distracted. I'm like, what are we doing? Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we, 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 what are we doing here? here? Cause we could eat. We could just eat. <laughs> See, I find eating as an Italian man, I find it so enjoyable. I don't really need to add another th- I find sex equally enjoyable. Yeah. It's very confusing yeah. for me. So you were saying that you warm for two days. Mm-hmm. And the only time you ever had an issue was when you were using lollipops. Yes. <laughs> we, I, like a, I got that cleared up. Oh, and I'm just curious what kind of lollipop, like how was, were you, like a Tootsie Pop? Yeah. Or, a tootsie mm-hmm. Pop? Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Standard. Yeah, I, I don't think those are hygienic to begin no. with. Though, no, you know? probably not. They're if barely wrapped you're up. You're around your teeth and your gums. <laughs> like I said, I was navigating this without yeah, a mentor, yeah, so <laughs> I'm trying to prevent people or women yeah. from making these mistakes. <laughs> so OnlyFans is great because now you are your own boss. Yes. And uh, you film all your own content. Yes. And it's all yours. You own it. Uh, what is like... What's the situation now? You got the book out. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's really cooking. How long did it take for it to get to where it's at now as far as your business is concerned? Well, the the first 10 months or 11 months of 2020, we did very well. So the panty selling led into guys asking for videos of you doing things in the panties, hence the candy thing, Mm -hmm. which was the birth of content. And then I was like, oh, the entrepreneurial part, I should be able to resell these videos somewhere. Oh, so yeah. then I go, you know, my rabbit hole on the internet searching, found many vids. Okay, it's a clip store. Well, oh, they have live webcam. What's live webcam? So then go down that that avenue. And so by the end of the year, uh, we were doing live webcam, making content, selling videos, mm-hmm. you know, doing the panties, that kind of thing. Damn. And we we did well. COVID was good for us. We got in right before. Oh, oh yeah. People were hornier <laughs> than ever during COVID, man. Oh, sure. So then, yeah, right. you know, 2021 comes around and we double what we made in 2020. So yeah. then I'm like, you know, that gets my senses up and I'm like wow this is you know really a business of course we were LLC'd and we had all the documents so you already bailed on social work at this point no oh, I was doing so you're both still working two oh, jobs. Doing both. you were still doing, uh, so, you were still doing social work in 2020 yeah oh, wow, eight, okay. to, 8 to 4 was still the day job and then oh, wow. you know quickly make dinner get on cam do the make videos do all that and then we started attending conventions for our industry well I was running out of vacation because oh, I was yeah. gone and also telling this story. Why are you going to Miami? Why are you going to L.A.? Why are you, you know, uh, oh, just I'm, you know, I'm trying to start this social media company. I'm going to a conference. You know, I would say that that was my lead in. And then in 2022, we took our dream vacation to the U.K. for oh, two weeks. Oh, nice. um, so that was awesome. And we got our taxes back from our tax person. Well, we had doubled our 2021 income in 2022. And it just way up. outpaced. It it was double what my triple what my social work income was probably, Damn. and so uh, I just I came, we came back and I think I worked two weeks, gave my notice, and that was it. And that's that. Uh, yeah, that's great, <clears throat> man. Wow. 
Okay, yep. but now here's the. There's always a. Uh, every light casts a shadow, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> What's the bad part now about now you have to m make content for not pleasure as much as business now? Well, um, that part hasn't changed. I love making content. I love doing live webcam. I think uh, how it's changed is because when you own your own business, if you don't work, you're not making money. Yeah. So I technically work. You know, I worked a lot when I had both jobs. I mean, I do eight hours at the day job and then literally probably another seven hours, you know, by the time doing all that. Very similar to stand up. I mean, honestly, like we, yeah. right. you know, I come home yeah. or I'm, you know, taking meetings and all of a sudden you put this different hat on and now yep. you're never another six hours yep. Yep. dealing with some other assholes in a different field. It's like, yep. you know, a nonstop section of assholes in my life. <laughs> A circle of shit bags. <laughs> Sorry, Ruby. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, but yeah. So I mean, I'm still working those hours now. Yeah, but, but it's something but you're it's choosing for to me, do. Yes. Yeah, different ballgame. And game. that's the big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, I I love it. I mean, there aren't days I don't just melt down and cry and you know call Laney or yeah, you course. know something. And you have bad days just like oh, any yeah. other day. But it's your bad day. But it's my bad day. It is. And I am, you know, if it's going to be, it's up to me. Mm -hmm. I actually got a tattoo last summer on my wrist that says hustle. Because if I'm not hustling, I am not making money. So right. now you are a true I am a true hustler. Yeah, because I, all right, this is what's great. There's like, um, you know, the more sex workers I became friendly with over the years and got close to, there's such a, it's like with stand-up, you know, you have people that reveal a lot on stage Ed, mm -hmm. and then they come off and you talk to them mm -hmm. and they're very closed off until oh, they sure. get to know you know sure. you like okay. know you yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's very similar yeah. with erotic dancers and sex workers right. on stage they're very vulnerable on camera they're very vulnerable because of the what the content is right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but when they come off it's a hustle if they don't if they don't see they can make money mm -hmm. Just like if they don't, like a comic can't see a benefit for them. Right. It's such a singular industry. Yeah. It's really hard to crack whatever that wall is. And I feel like someone that started in the real world or like that whole mm -hmm. nine to five world, it takes a minute. But now you're like, oh, yeah, if it, you know, money, time is money and money's on my mind kind of scenario. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I think I'm unique um, from some performers, though, is that I'm not a gatekeeper. Someone asks me information. I'm going to tell them. And and the reason I am that way and some people disagree with it. They're like, oh, really? you need to be charging for consults and you do that. And I do sometimes, you know, depending yeah. on what it is for. But also I. Uh, I had mentors. I hired mentors. When I started in OnlyFans, I didn't jump on that OnlyFans game until the fall or end of 2021. And it was already well on its way. And it was well on its way. And the, I avoided it because I knew, one, it was going to be a lot of work. Yeah, because you, you only get one shot to do it right in that scenario. That, right? And I didn't know what I was, you know, I didn't know how to run a fan site. And so I hired a mentor. You know, paid them for their time, who was in the top point zero 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 one percent type of thing. And also there are other um, performers and mentors in the industry who don't charge a dime for what they do. You know, they give that information out freely. Yeah. And so I wanted to find a good balance, you know, because I benefited from both. Right. And, uh, you know, that's I try not to be too closed off. Yeah, don't you think, though, that it has something to do with the fact that you did not start out that way? Like, you understand the value <clears throat> of a dollar and the value of relationship. Right. And also understanding, like, hey, a lot of people out there make money in a lot of different ways. I mean, you just have a, a lot of life experience. Like, Ed didn't start stand-up till he was, what, like 40. 10 years ago? 40. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you come at it from a professional perspective that a lot of these younger comedians don't have. Sure. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll also say this. Like, when you, like, giving away, like, it's like, you know, I had a, um, I had a van for a couple years, and... Um, you know, you just don't want to let everybody know that you have yeah, a van. We'll take advantage of it. <laughs> yeah, seriously. It's it's a lot of extra work. It's like, it's oh, a great I thought, metaphor. I thought we were just coming over to hang out. I got to move your couch. Oh. Seriously? I don't, yeah, it's like, yeah, who I wants see to what you're use going. you yeah. right. for what you yeah. got? Right. Yeah, I right. understand that, too. Right. Totally. Now, before we jump into talking more about the book and your event coming up at the Museum of Sex on the 13th of February... How did you decide I'm now going to sleep with people on camera? Was that a hard decision to make? No, not hard at all. Because uh, going from panties to now full penetration, mm -hmm. that's a big leap. Right, right. 
how I, we, how, how, you know, my partner and I came to that decision is I was only shooting with him, of course, through the pandemic and, you know, doing solo stuff. And I realized that in order to build my brand, I had to be, you know, had to give variety. And I knew with my age, um, I had fought the whole stepmom thing for, you know, people would try to get me to do the stepmom role plays. I fought it for a long time. And then one day I'm like, what is wrong with me? I'm leaving all this money on the table. Mm -hmm. Like, this is all role play. This is, you know. And now are you finding professional <clears throat> males to, and females to work with yeah. in the industry? Mm -hmm. You're not, so you're not picking people off the street. No, never, uh, okay. never, so never, all, never. A professional person. They have to so be no, attested. Like, which is a bummer pod, for me. No podcast tested. guys, no, nothing like that. No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> no guys named Ed McGowan on a podcast couch. Okay, great. But <laughs> I noted. <laughs> I actually didn't do my first collab until May of uh, 2022. So at, we were at XBiz Miami, which is an yeah. industry uh, only event, not a fan face. A lot event. of content creating going on there. Right. Now, everyone's and, handling their own biz. Everyone has a clean test. It's like a thing. And yeah, um, I had some, you know, a couple creators reach out to me. It's like we are the world, you know, after the American Music Awards, yeah. they made we are the world. It's just a whole nother thing of that. Ed, you know, <laughs> all the stars are in town. You got everyone's here. Let's book them up. Well, is that's that how true. They got that done? That's how they got that done. Yeah. I mean, I only do collabs at events because I live in Portland, Oregon. It's very dry. I think maybe I know of three three other creators and yeah. they're not in my niche and I'm not in their niche. Right. So yeah, you know that, but yeah, it was actually May of 2022. I did my first collab. That's awesome. And I haven't looked back. Um, I shot for a studio in December of 2021. I was, I had a studio reach out to me, you know, because of all my online presence, I guess. And yeah. so I did do my first studio shoot, uh, in uh, December of 2021. For score. Yeah, it's just like uh, how stand up is now, where no one wants you until everyone else wants you. Oh, they don't develop right. talent anymore. You know, Lainey knows that she's been in the game forever, but like porn used to be, they found you. Uh -huh. And then they made you it was uh, like the old Hollywood. System. Right, right. Yeah. Now right. it's like we don't want to touch you unless you already have a fan base. Right. And we'll put our brand on it. So, I mean, at some point it has to implode in all fronts in entertainment, right? Well, we don't. Well, then we don't need the studio anymore. Fuck your brand. Yeah, that's right, what I'm right. saying, Ed. Hey. Fuck their brand. I like it. Well, I that's like what it. happened with COVID because so many of the pro mm -hmm. stars too started yeah. producing their own content and doing the fan site thing. It really did affect studios, but totally. Uh, all right, so tell me about the event that's happening on the 13th. What yes. can people expect? Uh, this will be coming out the day. This is actually well, the day after. Day this after. It's coming out on Wednesday. Yeah. The event's tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, oh, okay, tomorrow. tomorrow night. We'll talk about it anyways because I okay. want to hear about it regardless. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's the Museum of Sex, which yes. you should all visit if you oh, ever come to New York yeah, City. Yeah, yeah, cool. And you're going to be talking about the book and what else? I'll have the book for sale, signed copies. I'll be doing a reading from the book. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to meet people. I've had a lot this of... your first one you've done, the reading of the book and having like a yes, person event? Yeah, oh. and I've had a lot of fans reach out to me on Instagram. So you're going to do more down the line. I so hope so, great. yeah. I hope this is just the start. What if someone comes up to you and they're like, hey, I was homeless and you gave me a sandwich and now I'm back on my feet because I've been watching your dirty <laughs> underwear pornos. Will you be like a tear will fall from your eye? Like, I'm I don't your know. Book. Like the old, the old social worker? Yeah, 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 right. It's probably unlikely since this is New York and I live in Portland. So. <laughs> what if they made the trek though? Wouldn't oh, that yeah. make a movie about that? <laughs> I walked here from Portland. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me get your panties. If someone, how much would it take for someone to get your panties day of event? Panties. The one you are oh. wearing as you're signing. Oh, uh, well, it'd be a lot. 500? Yeah, probably 500 bucks. They That's want to give bad. me 500 bucks. I'll give them my panties right off my You heard butt. it first, folks. <laughs> first. Five Come with cash. Hundy. No Zell bullshit. They want the <laughs> the, the cold cat. green. That's right. It's gonna be a bidding war. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else do you have going on? What's the next move? Because it's a book. Right. You got to read from the book. How do you pick the excerpts? Uh, is you're it like do Vonnegut, audio? where you're Vonnegut gonna... gets up there and does some jokes? Like, what do you do when you when you're gonna do it? I'm you probably gonna it? pick a really juicy section and Whoa. do that. Yeah. Something. I wrote the book very tongue in cheek too yeah. because I not only want to give information but I want people to laugh and and laugh at the trials and tribulations and the stuff I you know came across and did and experienced and learned so I love that I want it I want people to laugh They're will awesome. you do an audiobook yes yeah that's on my agenda this year he, loves, oh, that's cool. uh, he has a great joke because he loves ASMR 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Great joke about how you it. How you ASMR hair and say. My panties are so <laughs> you tight against. <laughs> That's gonna pop a bone in here. <laughs> Woo! Let's get the camera rolling. That's worth money. You get a zero in. <laughs> you could monetize that. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby, plug where you're at, where people can find you, please. I make it so easy. You can go to iamrubylin.com. It is all things Ruby. Link to my book, my podcast, the Granny Panty Podcast. Uh, all my fan sites, my everything. All right. Social there. media. Love it. All right there. Uh, JoshAcardo.com, at JoshAcardo, headlining Winterfest with Ed McGowan. He's coming with me. Uh, The Reef in Newport, Rhode Island. February 16th. February 16th, Friday. Follow me on Instagram at Ed McGowan Comedy, EdMcGowan.com. Email us. Give us a review of the podcast. Tell us about your jobs. Tell us about your panties. Whatever you want to talk (laughs) about. Send us an email at WorkingClassComedians at gmail.com. We'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at WorkingClassHoles. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on. 